Hello and welcome to another episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella. If you haven't already, hey, I would love for you to hit follow, like, subscribe, and tell a friend about this podcast. I've received a few emails where amazing individuals have told me how they've recommended this podcast to a friend of theirs or someone at work, and they've really started to enjoy it as well. So hopefully that's something that you can do this week, or you could leave a five-star review. That also spreads the word. Right now, though, let's get into today's verse. A wise youth makes hay while the sun shines, but what a shame to see a lad who sleeps away his hour of opportunity. That's Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5 from the TLB version. I have got Jackie here in studio with me again. You've got a bit of a Scottish streak. Jackie, so when, oh, hi. <laughs> so when you see the word lad in a uh, biblical text, does your inner Scottish woman step in a little bit? It absolutely does. And it, or I can hear myself just saying, and when a wee laddie sleeps away his hour of opportunity. I <laughs> can, can I actually get you to read out that verse again with your inner Scots woman coming out? Um, okay, let's give this a shot. A wise youth makes hay while the sun shines by Oh, what a shame to see a wee laddie who sleeps away his hour of opportunity. <laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness. They should be they should be like a NSV version, like yeah. a <laughs> new Scottish version or something like that. I love it. But anyway, we are talking about the fact that sometimes you get an opportunity and you need to seize it. Can't sleep it away. Uh, what are your first thoughts on this verse, Jack? really does say it could be seen as a little bit trite like you know just don't be lazy just you know hang just do stuff and don't be lazy don't hang about you know but get on with it mm. but I think it's a lot deeper than that so mm. oh know. okay well we'll get into that a little bit later I think for me see I look at this verse as someone who's quite achievement driven and it makes me just want to do things all the time because how do I know I'm not wasting away an opportunity? So when I moved to Melbourne um, a couple of years ago now, it was during the lockdown and I did not know how to cope in an environment where I couldn't achieve things. And um, I, I, it was forced rest like it was for a lot of us. And I really struggled with that because I felt like, and even to this day, probably I kind of feel like a few years of my life have been stolen from me because I couldn't achieve. I'd be so much further down the track with this or with that. And I think when I look at this verse, I see a lot of wisdom in it. But I also say to myself, I think we've got to be really careful with what defines the hour of opportunity, um, I guess is my, my thought on this. What would you say this verse reveals to you about who God is or what matters to him? Well, as a fellow overachiever or a person who loves to just keep doing stuff and going for more and more and more. Mm. I actually read this not as a not so much as a warning but very much as a focus on the one opportunity or the one thing that's in front of you at the moment. Right. Um I remember going to I was when I was looking to get back to work, going back into the workforce after a long period not being in the workforce and I went to went to church one Sunday and we had a visiting preacher from the states. And his whole sermon was based around, you know, just do what God's put in front of you. And at the moment, it was very much a, uh, you know, uh, a sermon in time for me because I was looking at going back to work. I had this opportunity sitting in front of me. Somebody um, from the workplace that I ended up working at had said to me, look, put in an application. I reckon you'd be really good for this role. Mm. And I was like, I've never done that before. This is really weird. I can't go and do that. And then heard this sermon and went, no, this is awesome. God's giving me an opportunity. Um, And it's not going to look like what I think it looks like. So we always think we go from A to B. Yeah. But what we don't realize is that God will often take us from, you know, from A.1 to (laughs) A.2 to A.3. And we do this like random zigzag pattern all the way to B. Yeah. And he gets us there because that's his promise to us. Mm -hmm. But how we get there is we look at the opportunity he's given us in that moment and we take it regardless of whether it looks like it makes sense. But if we've knocked on a door and he's opened it, we'd be silly not to take it. So, you know, when I 
see what he's he's wanting to say and how he wants us to partner with him. Mm. When he puts something in front of us, he wants us to actively go, thanks, God, I can do this. And I, I don't see it yet, but I reckon that you're going to use this to get me somewhere where you want me to be. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things. I remember reading a quote about sometimes the best opportunities in your life are disguised as burdens. I don't, I don't know if burdens is the right word, but it was basically saying that sometimes the best things in life don't necessarily always present themselves as that way. And sometimes you're thinking, okay, I'm going from point A to point B, but oh, I've got to go through this little side street. But actually, that side street is everything. And it's what God uses to, to change you or to help alter your thinking so you can flourish better at point B. I think something that I've definitely noticed is decision paralysis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you have so many opportunities and like so many options out there. But if you pick this pathway, it means you can't walk down this pathway. And I know there might be a lot of um, people listening right now who might be facing a bunch of decisions they need to make and so many different opportunities before them. How do we how do we choose that? How do we know what's from God and what's not from God? Yep. And it's such a big question, isn't it? Because the more we think about it, the more we become we start to question out am I hearing from God? Do I have a relationship with God? You know, what's going on? Is anything on? real anymore? <laughs> right? <laughs> you spiral a bit. Because yeah, yeah, the pressure of the decision mm-hmm. really gets to you and you so badly don't want to mess up that you end up not doing anything at all. Oh, absolutely. Yes, we've got millions of, like a multitude of small opportunities. But if we're looking for a new job, if we're making a big decision about something and we want it to be the right one and we're not we're not convinced or we're not um, certain yet that it's the God one, I think, A, any time we have confusion, it's not from God. So how do we pick between opportunities? Oh, I think you grasp one. Just pick one. Really, if you've got two options, both of them are godly or both of them, neither of them are going against scripture or, you know, against your moral code or anything like that. Pick one. See what happens. God's bigger than it. Um, And even if it turns out you did make the, you know, in air quotes, wrong decision, he's still going to make use of it. There's nothing he's not bigger than. He's still going to make use of it, that he'll still use it to get you to where he wants you to be. It's absolutely, he's bigger, he's better, he knows more. He's so much bigger. We can't make a wrong decision that he cannot overcome. Wow, yeah. Someone needed to hear that today. (laughs) Yeah. So you choose the wrong job. Yeah. He's, he knows what's there. He knows who's working there. He knows what challenges you're going to face. And he's bigger than it all. So there's actually no, no decision we can make, no opportunity we can take, no mistake we can make that God's not bigger than. Have you ever heard of something called analysis paralysis? We touched on this idea on today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. On Healthline.com, it says that analysis paralysis is being trapped in an endless loop of what if this, what if that scenarios until eventually you become so overwhelmed, you end up failing to make any decision at all. Now, Proverbs 10.5 talks about a wise youth making hay while the sun shines. But it says, what a shame to see a lad who sleeps away his hour of opportunity. Seems to me like sleeps and paralysis could be in the same street. Now, I don't know much about making hay, but I can definitely say that the main difference between making hay and sleeping is activity versus non-activity. In fact, I remember a time in my life where I got major analysis paralysis. I was really struggling to choose which uni course I should take after high school. Should I do nursing? Should I do biomedical sciences? Should I do... uh, At the time, I was doing all sciencey stuff. That was another journey in itself. But in that moment, I honestly didn't know which option I should go for. I just couldn't pick. 
I remember one of the lovely older ladies at church said to me, it's easier joy for God to steer a moving ship than a stationary one. I know that none of us want to make a wrong and hasty decision. Yes, that is absolutely the wise thing to do. Don't go rushing off making a choice before you've weighed it. But if you have weighed it all up, you've done your pros and cons, you've prayed about it, you've asked wise people around you for their opinions, and you still can't make a choice, perhaps you are becoming the sleeping lad referred to in Proverbs 10.5. Maybe your fear of making the wrong decision is actually stopping you from stepping up in this hour of opportunity. Maybe it's less about choosing the perfect pathway and more about trusting that God is big enough, strong enough and trustworthy enough to eventually steer you in the right direction. So today, if you are at a crossroads and you're facing a selection of opportunities that are different, but all reasonable, all godly, and you've weighed it all up and you still can't decide? Give it to God, surrender it to Him, and just pick one. It can be incredibly freeing to know that no matter how hard you try, you cannot mess up God's plan for your life. Well, that wraps up today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I hope you found it encouraging. I hope it could break off a little bit of that analysis paralysis. Cannot wait. Catch up next time.